Hello, this is Neil Ross, voice actor. Over the years, oh gosh, I was Rambo in Rambo, uh, Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin in Spider-Man, and uh, in Voltron, I did the voice of Keith, you remember him. Form feet and legs, form arms and torso, and I'll form the rest, I guess. And also in Voltron, I was uh, the voice of Pidge, you remember him? But that's not something that I usually discuss in mixed company. So we'll move along. And another character I did was Whitley White, the uh, ubiquitous uh, newscaster in the attack of the killer tomatoes. No matter uh, whether they turned on a radio or a television, whatever, Whitley White would always be on. In fact, sometimes Whitley White would be on as the anchor man and then throw it to himself in the field, which was quite a trick. And I just love that broadcaster who's madly in love with the sound of his own voice. This is Whitley White. I had more fun doing that than uh, I think is legally permitted. And then uh, in uh, G.I. Joe, probably I did a number of characters in G.I. Joe, but probably the one that's uh, best remembered would be, uh, it's been a while since I've done him, but uh, the character of Shipwreck. If you remember him in G.I. Joe, well, that's, that's the one I did that, that most people talk about. And then uh, in Transformers, I was Springer the helicopter, sort of a helicopter on steroids. And then I did uh, three of the Constructicons, Hook, Slag, and Bone Crusher. And those were uh, all throat rippers. Slag as I recall sounded something along these lines here. And you do that for half an hour and you're in traction. And then there was Bone Crusher. And he was sort of in here, as I recall, something along these lines. Another fun voice to perform, boys and girls. And as I recall, Hook uh, had a very high opinion of himself, thought he was very superior to the other Constructicons, and so he had this rather affected uh, delivery. I could go on like this for hours, but you will be spared. A personal memory on the voice acting sessions... Well, I always said at their best, they were like being invited to the greatest party you could imagine, except uh, there wasn't any booze and there weren't any hors d'oeuvres. There was popcorn once in a while. I'll get back to that. But the uh, collection of characters that performed these characters uh, was just amazing. You had this, the, this mix of, of, of stage actors on camera, film and television actors, writers, comedians, uh, gosh, I mean, people came from so many different areas in show business, and some of the stories and the jokes and the stuff that went on, and people asked me, well, be specific, tell us a joke. So much of it had to do with timing, personality, the, the, the vibe in the room at the moment. It was, you know, the old phrase, well, you had to be there. I mean, I could quote stuff, and you go, eh. But if you were there, you'd have fallen on the floor because of the situation. It just was an amazing group of people. I came into voiceover from the radio business, and I thought I'd met some wild characters in radio, and I had, I guess, but nothing to compare with, uh, with this group of actors that I got to interact with for a roughly 10 or 15-year period off and on in, in, in the cartoon business. Uh, just, just tons of fun. And... Um, Oh, the popcorn. Um, yes, well, Wally Burr, who I'm going to talk about in a second, Wally Burr uh, would frequently uh, make popcorn, uh, and it would be on the table when you got in to do the show. And we would be working in Wally Burr North, which was kind of a small room for the number of people that were involved sometimes. There was a Wally Burr South studio that was much larger, but for some reason we almost never worked there. We were always in North. And as I say, he would always make popcorn. And I'm one of the three people in America who doesn't like popcorn, so I wouldn't partake. But as the years rolled on, the room gradually began to smell of stale popcorn and old actors. And I drive by there now and then, and I wonder what's in there these days. And did they ever get rid of the smell of all of us? I don't know. As far as Wally Burr is concerned, yes, Wally Burr, let me think. An unusual, furtive little man with strange eyes. I remember he always had to get incredibly drunk before he would perform any of his bizarre op 
Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I got confused. No, I'm talking about Peter Lorre in Arsenic and Old Lace. No, Wally Burr. Yes, yes, I know who you mean now. The tall, distinguished man with graying temples. Yeah, Wally Burr. No, in all seriousness, I owe a huge part of my career to Wally. Um, he uh, was friendly with m my uh, late agent, Donna Lee Davies, and uh, he said, if you want to send some of your people into audition, feel free. And she sent some of us in, and we were lucky enough to connect on some shows. And, uh, you know, as I've said over the years, Wally was always very, very loyal to his people. Uh, he didn't regard us as sort of disposable. If, if he liked you and he liked your, your work ethic and whatnot and what you could bring to the project, he would have you back to audition for stuff over and over and over again. And uh, as I say, I owe a huge uh, a part of my, my career to Wally, and I'm, I'm very grateful to him for that. And he was one of the most conscientious directors I ever worked with. He, I recall, often would arrive uh, bleary-eyed in the morning because he'd been up till 3 or 4 a.m. going over the scripts and the storyboards. And, uh, I mean, he was meticulous. And I have to say that I think a big part of the reason that Transformers and G.I. Joe were as popular as they were and have... Uh, survived the test of time and are still as popular as they are today is because of a lot of the trouble that Wally went to to get them exactly the way he wanted them to be. So that's my take on Wally Burr. I guess in closing, I'd like to say I still do this kind of stuff. I'm represented by the esteemed firm of CESD, and I have a website, neilross.com, N-E-I-L-R-O-S-S.com. You can go on there and Listen to my animation demo and listen to some of the other stuff I've done over the years, like uh, being the announcer on the Academy Awards and some of the narrations I've done for public television and other people like that. And Just uh, pour yourself a huge snifter of 100-year-old brandy and get ready to be absolutely dazzled. And if there's anyone still awake, I just want to say thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>